Folks, I have a new subscriber friend who contacted me yesterday and wanted to know if there was you know, a good program where you could edit GoPro Hero 3 video along with some Nikon video that he shot. He has a Nikon camcorder or I guess a DSLR of some sort. He shot a multi-camera video of his mother cooking one of her favorite recipes and he wants to be able to put this video together. Now, as you know, I'm a, a Premiere Pro CC uh, user. So I told him right quick that you know, my favorite program to use that would be Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Of course, you can maybe you can find Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, buy that somewhere now. But you're still talking about a very expensive program. And uh, he might want, this person might want to go and shell out the money to get a Premiere Pro CC. Me, as a, as a guy who does this professionally, I pretty much have to do that. And I think I pay like $49 a month for the entire W Creative Suite. But I make that back since I do a lot of freelance work and plus I use it in my day-to-day -day work as well. But, uh, and, and, and yeah, so folks weigh in if you know of better editors than this one. But here, I'm going to show them an alternative. This is MPEG Video Wizard. If you go to Womble.com, I'm going to go ahead and just do that. You'll go to, you'll land at this site. And this is a uh, this is a very affordable uh, video editing program. I think it's at 100 bucks. Yes, you see here, single user personal license, 99 dollars. It's not thousands of dollars, which is what it's going to cost, or you know, way up there to get Premiere Pro CC or just to subscribe or anything. Now, this is a very bare bones program. It is not it does not have a lot of bells and whistles, but it does have a lot of power, and it will um, you know. What my friend is trying to do, of course, is trying to bring his Nikon video into uh, the GoPro, the free GoPro software, the um, GoPro Studio, and he's not able to do that. Well, this is a, is a fairly cheap program and a very powerful little video editor that I've used for years, and you can go straight to DVD with it. Anyway, I'm going to go back to home, and you can see the story is Womble.com. I'm not sure even what country it's made in. It may be in, a, in America. I don't know, but it really does a great job with MPEGs. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how it works. Why did I downloaded the free 30-day, fully functional 30-day download? So I have my own personal license of this, but it's an older version, so I wanted to show the, the new version. So I'm going to say, okay, for now we have our 30-day version. And here it comes. And when you bring yours up, it might not look exactly like this. I went up here to mine, and I clicked, uh, okay, so I'll close this, these little tips. I went up here to mine and I, I picked the maximum layout and that way it shows me the maximum uh, range of the page. And you can see I've actually already brought in a couple pieces of video. What I did, I brought in a piece actually from a, or a, a, a clip of video from a Canon camcorder. That's what this 00160 is. Then I also have here some GoPro video. So I've got the GoPro so you can see that you can use both of them. Now, you're not going to do multi-channel video on this in, the, in Premiere Pro. What he's described that he's done, he shot his mom with two cameras. In Premiere Pro, you could put two tracks, right? You could stack them on top of each other and you could go back and forth between them. What my friend would have to do if he went with this program is, is use a, a clip and then go to another clip and then use a, uh, the other angle and go back. It's just a little, take a little longer to do it, but still very easy to do. Let me show you how this program works, though. Just like many video editors, you have your preview window and you have your program window. So this is where your final video is going to be. Here's where you're, you're, uh, you're going to do some of your editing. So I'm going to double click on the piece of Canon video here. And so this is a 1080p video that I shot. I'm inside a church at a wedding. And I'm, you know, I'm just kind of panning around to show how pretty the church is inside, right? Well, I can see right off the bat here as I hit the space bar to play. I was pretty shaky there at the beginning. Now, what I really was trying to do is get my, my tripod in position and so I could pan across this ceiling. So I don't want this shaky video at the beginning, right? So the way this works, just with almost any video, you've got your ins and outs. So you got this mark in here. I'm going to click that, or I could hit I. And then I'm going to see how far I want to go with this. I'm going to pan across nice and slow, trying to show the beautiful rafters and everything in this church. And I'll pan down. I'm going to stop right along in here and I'll put a mark out. So now what I can do, of course, is just pull that down onto the little video line and I should have that edited piece of video here. And we come to our out point. And then I'm gonna go here to the GoPro and let's look and see if it works. And looky here, our GoPro works just fine. So here I am, 
I'm up there with a GoPro and I want to show an angle from the balcony. So I'm going to go ahead and I've got behind the sound booth. I'm going to do a, a mark in here. I'm going to hit my play bar. And let's stop right about in there. And I'll put an out. And there's our mark out. I'm going to pull that down. And now I have the two pieces of video. And this is really a nice program for, uh, for, for really for what it costs. Over here you have effects. Look at this. And it gives you a bunch of different effects. I just like to typically use dissolves in situations like this and drag it across it. Uh-oh, I didn't want to do that one though. Let's do an undo. Your undo, and this is over here, it's always Control-Z anyway, but see here it is. I probably want a different kind of dissolve. So I'm going to take a blend. I think that's kind of the cross dissolve that I like to use. We should have a cross dissolve here now that goes from one into the other. We'll see that happen. I'm pretty sure if I click on this and drag it that it lets me, there we go, make that cross dissolve a little slow, a little faster. Let's make that look now. That's, a, that's what we have. I'm hitting the space bar to make the cross dissolve. So there we go. So I've done a piece of video. I've, I've, I've actually done an edit. The other thing that says is it has titles and all in it. So if you want to click over here on um, back to project, and I think oh, up here we have a title maker up in the very top. So see that there's the title editor. You can click on that. It brings up little titles where you can go in and you can, um, you know, go into the graphics here. We can take like a box or something, put that in there. We don't want that pink. Let's go get something better than that. Or you can pick, you can go to here, you can pick another color. Let's go ahead and pick something like this. Um, I don't know, maybe this dark blue or something here. And pick the text tool. So I go here, I could say Tony Lee Glenn Video Editor. I'll probably need that to be a little smaller, don't I? So I'm going to go back to text. I'm going to choose uh, maybe 22, something like that. Right, let's make it 24. Okay, now we can pull that down onto that. Ah, let's make that go to the back, send it to back, and there we go. Now we have that, and I've created a lower third. And I can see I don't need all this extra space here, so I'm going to click on that and pull that back. And so now I have a, uh, I'm going to save that. This will be Tony Title. Uh, Let's do that. Save. And now if I go over here to files, I'll see titles. I'll see that I have Tony title. I can pull that down onto the title line. That's what this is, is the title line here. And we can see there's my lower third. That's not fancy looking. Plus it has a red line around it. I didn't realize I'd done that. Let's go back and fix that. So I click on this box. Back to graphics. Let's make this line color. Uh, same color, I guess, as the other one was. There we go. Now that won't show up. Close that. Yes, we're going to save that. And now, if I take that out and back in, maybe you won't have that hideous red around it. And we don't. Very cool. What you do here, what well, I started a while ago, you can right click on these and you can say uh, add default fades, I guess. And that should fade in. Let's see if it does. Hit my space bar again, and now it fades in. But through that transition, it should fade out. Very good. Uh, but the way this program works, you can do all your video edits inside this little $99 program. And uh, you have all the, the effects in the world. You play want to play around with these effects, it's just outstanding. Um, you know, the other thing, too, is if you don't like the, the kind of raw looks that you get with some of these uh, lower thirds, you can make your own lower thirds. Okay. So let's say I don't like the look of lower thirds like this. This program is flexible enough that if you use Photoshop, if you have Photoshop or a similar photo editing program, you can create your own lower thirds. I'm going to say File, New, and Photoshop. I'm going to go 1920 by 1080 is what I want, okay, since we're using 1080p video. Then I'm going to like um, go over here and grab a box. And I'll make a lower third this way. And I don't want that to be the color of that box. Okay, so 
So I've created my box here. I'm going to pick a color here from over here somewhere. Let's pick something kind of like a dark blue again or as a green. That's not bad. Then I'm going to put my text on top of this in Photoshop. Let's drag it up here to start. Tony Lee Glenn. That's a crazy script I wouldn't typically use. Plus, let's do it because it's so different. Let's make it white. Okay. And I'll pull that on the top of that. And that box is way too big. So let's uh, move that box over some. And so there we go. File. And what you want to do if you're going to use it in MPEG Video Wizard, you're going to do Save for Web, probably be the best way to do it. And I'm going to use GIF. If you use JPEG, you know, you're going to have this white background behind it. And it's going to block out your video. I've tried using a Ping 24, which is what I was hoping I could use, but it doesn't allow me to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as a GIF. I'm going to say Save. And this will be uh, Tony, lower third. Say save. Now I'm going to kind of close this. I don't need to save that anymore. If I want to import, I'm going to say right clicked in there and hit import items. I should be able to go to Tony, lower third. Tony, lower third is right there. And so now, if I don't want to use this kind of, you know, like I say, that I don't think it does the best job in the world. You could try anything you want to with this. But if you want to use your even your Photoshop lower thirds, you can pull those in. And now you got your nice Tony lower third. I'm going to go ahead and do the apply default fades again. Now let's say that I want that to appear right here at the kind of the beginning of this. So now I'm going to hit my my space bar to play. And there we go. It fades in real nicely and it should fade right out. Of course, you can change the uh, length of these. I want that to only be 3.5 seconds now. Let's do a hit it again. It fades in and out much faster. Very good. <clears throat> so you can go do a whole lot of video editing just with this right here. If you want to, uh, let me kind of extend this one piece of clip right here. I think I got some audio on there. Let me turn it up and we'll hear it. The grandeur of the sound booth grandeur of the sound booth. I guess I was talking to the sound guy. <clears throat> so let's say you want to export this video to YouTube or something. What you have, you have an export uh, function up here. And you go into your general and you tell it what you want it to be. Now, if there's a weakness to this program, it's that for the most part, I think you export to MPEG-2. Now, I, I can't remember. It's been a while since I've used this, but you have these various different ones. You can do the audio, the, just the video. I don't know what some of these, I'm not sure what MPEG-1 system means, but I always use the MPEG-2 program. But YouTube will take MPEG-2s, and you have your control over how much uh, encoding you put onto this. I'm going to go to video. Now you can see here I have, it's, it comes up by default, variable bit rate, 15 megs per second. If I want my video to be very much higher quality, I'm going to go to probably a constant bit rate. I'm going to go to something like 24 Oh, oh, oh. 24 megs per second and what you do uh, you can choose what what you want your audio to be AC3 is good you can you can do different kinds of uh, this is this is probably a good way to leave it 256 K is pretty good we'll go over here to the monitor and we can actually watch this thing happen I'm gonna make sure it's going to the right place looks like it's going into the same folder so I'm gonna say cancel for now I'm going to the right place go to monitor I'm gonna hit start and it will uh, render out my video and it does a pretty good job it goes pretty quickly so let's see how did that video turn out let's go take a look from here I'm going to double click on it I called it Womble video that's one nice sweeping shot to show the uh, the grandeur of, of the sound booth. So there you go, I've created a pretty nice video that uses the GoPro Hero 3 and also the um, um, Canon video that I shot. Now the question will probably rise here is, well what if I'm doing different sizes of videos like 4K, 2.7K, will Womble handle that? The answer is no, you cannot uh, bring in the 2.7K the uh, probably even the 1440p and stuff like that you typically have to shoot in one of the standard modes like 720p 1080p 
uh, various frame rates I don't think are going to make a difference at all. Uh, the reason I know that is I'm pretty sure that the GoPro video I shot right here, I think I shot it at 60 frames per second. So MPEG Video Wizard will handle just your standard sizes. Um, so it's not a, a do-all, end-all for everything, but now what my friend could do, he could export his 4K video or his 2.7K with the GoPro Studio down and convert it down to uh, 1080p, bring it in and then edit it with this and not have to pay a bundle. Now there may be way better video editors out of video editing uh, softwares out there that are economy. Uh, people go ahead and weigh in and tell me what you think are the best ones and we'll pass those recommendations along to other people. But I wanted to make you aware of a very nice, kind of fairly full featured, uh, excellent little MPEG, MPEG 4s, MPEG 2s, MPEG 1 video editor and it is quite handy. You can do a lot of good stuff with it. You can go down the rabbit hole pretty far with this and you'll find out there's just a lot of stuff you can do with Womble MPEG Video Wizard. And it also is a very excellent program for going straight to DVD. You can export a DVD up here. You have your DVD maker and you can put your titles and stuff in there. They have various templates and things that you can use uh, to, um, to create your chapters and stuff like that. And I promise you'll have fun with it if you get it. Um, but like I say, if there are better ones out there folks are uh, aware of, just let me know. And, uh, and we'll put links to that out there as well. Peace to all. Be cool. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like. One thing I did was go back and tag this video a little bit better to show that the Nikon type video will work with this. I had used uh, this bit here was a, a GoPro Hero 3. This was a Canon that we talked about earlier, but since my, the person that asked me the question about video editing was curious about uh, Nikon, he's, he's trying to mix Nikon video with his GoPro. Then you can see here, this does great. I shot this with a D5100, so it should be the same kind of MPEG-4. Uh, you can double click on these videos and watch these two. Uh, I'll explain that earlier. Okay. And uh, of course you can then double click back on this window and it'll take you back to your regular scene. So I'm sure there are many other good programs. Uh, just this is one I'm comfortable with using it as an alternative. Um, as I said, the Premiere Pro Elements should be similar, or then our Premiere Elements, whatever, should be similar to what you've got with W Premiere, but cheaper. If you can afford a program like uh, Sony Vegas, like Premiere Pro, or uh, Final Cut Pro if you have an Apple, then you'd be you know, way better off doing it because you'd be able to do your multiple screens and, and uh, you'd be able to take virtually any and every format and then export out to a lot of other formats besides the MPEG-2. But still, this is a nice little program, 99 bucks. You can do worse, and it's very easy to use. That's what I like about it. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, check back in with me. Give me a shout if you'd like to uh, suggest maybe your video editor that you like that's alternative to one of the professional ones. I'm sure we'll probably get some uh, input from viewers that can give us better clues to what would be uh, uh, some other alternatives. But this has been one I've really liked over the years.